Terrorist, agent provocateur, supposedly with some obscure Bangladeshi group funded out of Tripoli. They'll get you anything from a place at university to a supply of plastic explosives. From money for the industrial subversion. Maggie, you're beginning to sound like that other Maggie. More coffee? No, I really must go. Oh, Mel. Get yourself a cheeseburger, maybe a peach melba or a banana split. See if they've got any of that squeezy cream. You know, looks like shaving soap. Thanks, a bunch. This is a special announcement for Mr. Clark from Eastbourne. A member of the crew has found your son. Can you kindly collect him from the purser's office? Oh, it's such a mal de mer, dear. That's not Mrs. Gopal. She's sister or something. Miss G flew to Amsterdam on Saturday with Ali and Karim. Who's minding the storm? Picture of one sick girl. Uh, she flew back on Tuesday. Some kids. So who's that? She's uh, traveling on Mrs. G's passport. It's a good likeness. Kids are a good camouflage. I gotta pay a visit. Got to you too. You should have said that you were a bad sailor. Don't take your eyes off them. Now look, feel like a dick again. Use this. Bedford Camper, W Whiskey F Freddy X X Ray 2388s. Got it? Got it. Mags, did you get my perfume? Yes, the two ounces and the atomizer. You're a love. Mm, it'll cost you. Listen, tell the boys no hassle. A normal procedure, maybe bumping for a bit of duty free. Roger, Mom. Roger yourself. Out. Uh, Tough. <laughs> Ah, did you use it? Managed to hold out, thanks. Get a glass. Souvenir. Memorable trip. Did you do the course on withstanding torture and deprivation? Yeah, nine out of ten. What did you fail on? No, wouldn't you like to know?
How was the trip? Oh, Ruffy Poo. Ruffy Poo? Was Force 8 out there, man? Lies, absolute lies. It was barely a ripple. Well, I thought of you. I had lunch at the Grand. The wind fair shook the chandelier, and the pheasant was so well hung, it fell apart. Hope you got a mouthful of buckshot out. <laughs> Don't get your rag out. Fred, you can drop back for a while if you like. Will do. Well, he's certainly not heading for home. I'm dying to have a pee. Tess, you really are a trial on this trip. Achtung, achtung, you lot. Sorry, ladies, in the co-op supermarket. Thanks, darling. I was here first. Okay, on your back, girl. Fred, get on the infernal machine. Set up a scan of the area. Will do. It's on the screen now, Mags. I know, like the back of my foot. I'm afraid you'll have to move on, madam. No, uh, you move on. This good chap. You do the backup on Tess. I'll stay with the Capel for a while. I'm on my way over. Ground. 
have a feeling we're going to be viewing that little bijou terraced house. Two up, two down. And an outside loop. Will you write down the number of Messrs. Men and Company, established 1891? It's about the time this lot was built. <laughs> Should be in the Royal Architectural Society. I am. Drunken Scotsman who, who slipped and fell and heard the crack and said, I hope it's my leg. <laughs> Are you all right? And the mains. Oh. Bye. Nigel. Yes. You have got an enormous spider on your shoulder. What? Oh. <laughs> now you know why I failed. Rats. Mine's creepy crawlies. I know. I read your file. Out of the kitchen. Maybe she's making a cup of tea. Four in the morning. She can't sleep. How long have I got? Not long. And then I'm going to crash into that sack and send a line of Zeds that'll stretch to Australia. You tired? Oh no, actually. I love sitting up half the night with you, baby. Imagine you're in some disco and there's some fab guy there, the ultimate prat. Shirt unbuttoned down to the waist, hairy chest, revealing the gold medallion swinging. Oh, yeah. And how do I look? Oh, you're looking FAB too. Shirt unbuttoned down to your waist, revealing the gold medallion swinging. <laughs> how come you look so adorable and such a filthy creep? I take after my mother. Do you really think this chick's a terrorist? It's damn pretty. You know what my theory is? What? She's fat, so a bit of skirt. That I don't believe. You should have seen him on that boat, stuffing his face with fish and chips like there's no tomorrow. Oh, that's what I could go now. Fish and chips, salt and vinegar, saveloy and a new green. Not this time of night. Don't think you're preggers, do you? <laughs> well, this job. Don't get time. 
Oh. I can always find time for the odd dalliance. Have you seen that guy from Special Branch? Who, Roddy? I think that's the one. He rang a couple of times. Spoke to my answering sheet. Oh, that's romantic. What did he say? He wants to go skiing. He's organised a group of his friends. You going? Nah. I don't think I could face another skiing holiday with a load of hoorays and their ghastly girlfriends. They're such baby boys. Do you know what they do? They get plastered. They throw bread at one another. And all they talk about is bottoms and toilets. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as you've got a fit of the giggles, you won't want to go to sleep, so I'll just get another hour in. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Your time is up. Get your butt in gear. Hey, wait a minute. What? She's on the move. What's she doing? She's in the house. Right, you get on after her. I'll follow you in the jam jar. Oi, car keys. You've got them. Oh. Sorry! One. Thrush, would you believe our bird's in flight? Okay. What's on? Fled the coop. 4.25. Tess is on her tail. Heading south on Whitcomb Street. I was. I need coffee intravenously. Stay tuned. I'll alert some backup. Stay on it. trick in the book. You know what? What? That's the same cab I picked her up from the co-op. I know. Oh. We're going to spread it about. Come into the sewers and you sweep into the front, large as lad. Kneeling a haystack. Mm -hmm. These are my people, man. Another gear. Change colors like a chameleon. You want me funky? Mm -hmm. You got it. <laughs> Come and see what we got so far. Anything more on the taxi? A fake. Fake plates, anyway. Both pickups were prearranged. The double shuffle this morning was routine. We found this magazine from a submachine gun. Nine millimeters. Hey, 
scatterbrain. Yes, donkey head. Mr. Donkey Head to you. Okay, Mr. Donkey Head. Simon! Maggie. I've snatched a boy from prep school. Report coming through on Z's range. Black cab, same number plate. Kidnapping? Hadn't read it that way. Oh, the ID just come through in prints on the glass. Shafi Aziz, straight out of the Baker Valley. Hasn't done active service since 83. The lot attack. Get over there. We're still turning over the stakeout. Over. Over and out. Caught with our knickers down, Tiskins. You people get off. You know there's a terrorist group on the move. You keep it to yourselves until it's too late. And then you come on with this I'm in charge routine. Inspector, we are not in charge. We were following a lead, as the jargon goes. Yeah, and it blew up on you, I know. Well, the show was in a bad Hands way. It's going to be on the table for quite a while. Well, what about the others? The man got it in the shoulder. And then the little lad's still in shock. And I understand your people are going to inform the kidnapped boy's parents. That's right, yeah. Nobody welcome to that one. Well, it's more our kind of job, isn't it? Now he's been sexist. Helpful. Can't help enough. The firepower and penetration are unequaled by any other weapon in this category, gentlemen. That's very impressive, Mr. Maxted, but we do have a little thing called the Sidewinder A32. And the commies don't do too badly with the RT7. <laughs> True, sir. But neither of them have this much maneuverability. Now, Excuse me, gentlemen. This must be urgent. Sure, go ahead. I want to take a closer look at these. We'll meet you in the dining room. Thank you. Richard Maxted here. Look, I left strict instructions. I'm so sorry, sir. There's a caller about your son. He says it's very urgent. What? I'll put him through. Yes, sir. Hello? Hello, who is that? Is that Mr. Richard Maxted? It is. We have kidnapped your son. We have taken your boy, Simon. If you want the boy back alive, you will obey instructions. Kidnap? Oh, my God. Look. Look, whoever you are, let him go. I'll give you every last penny I've got. Just let him go. <laughs> Hey, listen to me, Mr. Maxted, and listen carefully. Uh, we don't want money, but we are deadly serious. The boy dies unless you comply. What do you want? We want you, Mr. Maxted. That's all. Me? Yes. You are to leave the factory now, immediately, without talking to anyone. Get that anyone. Yes. You drive out of the factory and head for Gatwick. Gatwick. The Star Hotel. Uh, leave your car keys in the ashtray and check in as Mr. Simons. I think that's appropriate. Uh, you check in and wait. Understand? You do not contact your wife or the police or anyone. <laughs> Unless you want the boy to die. What do you want me for? Uh, we'll get to that, Mr. Maxted. Get out of there. Now. Hi, you 
princess up in the room to the right of the hall. I'd like the car out of sight. There's a yard behind the garage, OK? I'll give you a hand with this. Jeez, seven. Yeah. Oh, Mrs Forbes, this is my daughter-in-law. She's quite, quite shocked. Have you any more news for us? Anything at all? We may have to wait for them to make the first move. But they made the first move. That poor child and, and Hardwick, poor man. An ex-Marine, fought in the Falklands and devoted to Simon. Mrs. Forbes, what are we to do? We cannot just sit here. I do assure you, Mrs. Maxton, that a lot is being done as fast as possible. What do they want from us? We're not millionaires. I mean, this place is mortgaged to the hilt. Richard has a good job, but he's not a tycoon. Well, I expect they'll tell us what they want when they're ready. You say they, but who are they? I expect they'll tell us that as well. <laughs> Sir Wallace Oxley is expecting. Oh, yes, sir. Just pulling over there. We were at a breakfast meeting. One of the curses of Anglo-American relations. Except that you can sometimes get out onto the links for an hour or two afterwards. His secretary gave him a bleep. He took the call in his office. Then evidently he left Hotfoot without saying a word. I understand now, but I was bloody furious at the time. What's his exact position in the hierarchy, Sir Wallace? Director of Special Projects. He would have access to developments on Star 5, then? Been in on it since the inception. His security vetting is very high. You've checked him out. But of course you would. Can we check the register on technical data? You can, but nothing sensitive leaves the strong room ever. I realize that, but, um, this goes with us everywhere. He has a pretty sharp brain, I understand. Yes. He called Mrs. Maxted on the car phone, but as of a few minutes ago, he hasn't returned home. Well, it would take him a while. Could I take a look at his office? Of course. I'll take you there myself. What's the procedure, Sir Wallace, with photocopying? Oh, standard throughout the plant. A locked copy retained, cleared by security at all times. Each copy marked with the user's code. I'll get security up here. Get Johnson in here, Miss Willis. Simon's my godson. Marvellous little chap. I'm sure he is, sir. Did you know that the Iranians have acquired a Star 5 via the PLO? Fat lot of good that'll do them. Without the expertise. Passing Gopal shop now. What have you got, Tess? He left on the paper round at 7.09 and hasn't come back. The camp is parked outside. Yes, the boys have a tripper on it. It hasn't moved since last night. What do you use for the paper round? Tradesman's bike. <laughs> well, with this way, you'd need a tricycle. <laughs> I agree. Could do with a couple of chapatis myself. Oh, Mag's on her way. I know. By the way, got your chips. I know, I'm saving them. Well, should have said something. Fred! Good 
morning, Mrs. Capel. What is that? Well, it says it is. Open up. We can talk at the back. I can't leave the shop, and my husband is out. Delivering newspapers, I know. How'd you hear one man the store? Are you with this one? Yeah. Do as she says. Mrs. Gopal, where's your husband? I don't know. He said he had some calls to make. He didn't take the camper. Well, how do you expect him back? He didn't say. Co op. Ely Way. Don't you stop, Sugar Pops, Mrs. Capel? I don't understand. You bought these yesterday at the co-op on the way back from Dover. Oh, yes. Only you didn't choose them. Shafi Aziz chose them for you. The living room's through there. Okay, you got two few more? This is Layla. Another cousin for you, Mrs. Capel. What's going to happen? It depends on you. Answer it. Don't do anything silly, Mrs. Capel. Children will miss you. Hello? Yes, she's all right now. It was just a little cough. Did you give her the link to then? Yes, but it's all right. She's okay now. You didn't send her to school? No. Ah, good. That's it, that's it. Yes, it, it was in my bag. I found it after you left. Kill the children, my love. I will be back in about three or four days then. We'll have it in the chairs. I will. Yes, I know. I will if he calls, huh? Goodbye. I love their kids. About a mile and a quarter away from the shop. This is the phone box which Gopal called from. Yeah, the trace, I know. But he's not going to be wobbling far on that bike. No, I don't suppose he is really. <laughs> A lot of sympathy calls. Lady Hale keeps them as brief as possible. Nothing from the abductor yet. Nothing from Maxted either. Thanks, Inspector. You have the link up. Okay, thanks. What time do you normally close? Post office, 5.30. Shop, 8, half past. We're going to find that child, Mrs. Capel. Help us now and it'll make all the difference. They'll kill us. They will kill us all. Have a nice day. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you have a reservation for me. Simons. That's right, sir. How will you be paying? A credit card. Uh, no, make that cash. May I ask you for a deposit? It's 35 pounds. Thank you. Room 203. Have a pleasant stay. Thank you. May I, sir? Oh, don't bother. I can manage. This way. Your key, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you.
guess. Mr. Simons? You know bloody well who it is. What's the next move? Would you like to speak to your son? Yes. Yes, I would, please. One moment. Daddy. Hello, Simon. Daddy, they killed Ronnie. No, no, they didn't, son. He's hurt, but he's going to be all right. He tried to save me. Yes, I know. And how about you, Simon? Are you all right? Yes. Simon, you'll just have to hang on for a while. I've got to do something for them, and then they'll let you go. Something bad, Daddy. Oh, don't you worry about that. I'm going to do it, and then they're going to let you go. Right. Simon, be a good boy. And, and try not to be frightened. We love you. We all love you. Listen to me. I'm listening. Open the bedside drawer under the telephone. You see them? The ticket, the passport? Yes. Look in the passport. Now the wardrobe. Look in the wardrobe. You change. Leave what you're wearing. Understand? Yes. Now, remain in the hotel room until 40 minutes before flight time. And you only have hand luggage to carry. Then take the hotel bus to the airport check-in. If you leave the room, use the phone, or attempt to communicate with anyone in any way, that's it. The boy dies. Anybody knock? Don't answer. There's food and drink in the fridge. Fibers! made the headlines. You've got a lot of standards out there. We have a paper round. Who takes them? Young boy, local lad. What time does he come? Soon. Don't you have to make them up? I should. Do it then. Everything is normal. Late again, Mrs. Capel. I'm going down the bars later. I'm in the eats for the big one. Get your skates on. I'm going as fast as I can. Got some help, have you? Expanding, are you? You'll be opening an off license before long. These will help yourself. A pair of good lookers like these. There you are, then. Get off if you're in such a hurry. It's all, Mrs. Capel. I reckon I'm going to win something tonight. I can feel it in the water. Grab the book before she shuts it up. I'll take that, Mrs. Gopal. Fred. Tessa, come in. Urgent. Over. Fred here. Reading you. Over. Young paper boy. Just left here. Cockney lad. About four foot nothing. Like grey anorak and jeans. Grab him or we've blown the lot. Get on the blower and see what Streets is doing. Fellas doing it to girls. What's this? We want to talk to you. You can't be coppers. Not good lookers like you. What's your name? Dwayne. What's yours? Fred. 
afraid. Oh, Dwayne, eh? Yeah, well, I couldn't be called Sharon, could I? Actually, you're wrong. We are coppers, we're sort of. You could help us. What, help the bleeding fuzz? Have you seen the headlines on your newspapers? Nope. Well, look at them. Now, you wouldn't want a young boy to die if you could help. It's nothing to do with me. Could be a reward. Reward? How much? Could be thousands. Thousands bleeding now. So I get in. <laughs> It, Mags. We sussed the address, but the scrawl is in something like Urdu. Okay, pick up Haji. She'll be outside in 60 seconds. And uh, give me the address, and we'll get something going. Where's the gate number 60? Now, all you have to do is put the paper in the slot. Not all the way, about halfway, and that's really important, about halfway. You already told me that. I'm not stupid. Deprived, but not demented. Go on, Dwayne, baby, you tell him. Then walk on, right? Don't look back. I know, or I'll turn to salt. Look, you've got my address, haven't you? Yeah, we got it. you probably get a medal. Stuff the medal. It's the girl I'm after. Last one through. All right. It's kind of done, man. We'll set this end. Oh, uh, fella here says he knows you, Tess. A small arms at Brockett. Roddy? Tell him I hope he's improved. <laughs> OK, joke's over. Stay on the line. So what's this Roddy like? Tasty. He's got fair, wavy hair. My sort? I don't know. I hope it's not bent. He borrowed my blow dry ones. Hasn't given it back.
it is? Did my knee at Rugger. Don't let on. Well, you can borrow my hair dryer any time you like. I don't give a damn how you do it. Close the airport down if you have to. Tell them the runway is smothered in seagulls, but that plane doesn't go till those men are off it. Now get on with it. Yes. Your son tells me he's crazy about aeroplanes. Simon! Dad! Oh, Simon! Thank God, are you all right? Excuse me, son. <laughs> You're gonna hate the grub and the scrubs. Mind you, they do good porridge. She reckoned you might be Ben. Now look here, Fred. We'll get his skeezer stowed away. And then we'll see about. 